Okay, everybody, we're going to move on from our discussion of magnetism to something that I promise has nothing to do with your right hand, but is nonetheless rather closely related. So right now, take a second, pause the video, and answer the do now question. What do those things have in common? Okay, well, one thing I hope you realize you have, these things have in common is that they're all waves, right? All of these are types of waves. Light is a wave, ultraviolet is a type of light, heat might not obviously be a wave, but it is in fact, or could be an infrared wave, and radio signals are a radio wave. If you want to be even more precise, these are a specific type of wave. These are all examples of electromagnetic waves. So what makes a wave electromagnetic, and what are the characteristics of electromagnetic waves? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. The discussion of what makes a, elect a wave electromagnetic is a little bit complicated, but one of the fundamental things is that anything that is electromagnetic falls on this spectrum called the electromagnetic spectrum. And you guys have a version of this chart in your reference table. So these give some of the most common examples of electromagnetic radiation. So some of the ones you know about, the one you know about all the time, there's visible light. Um, and what's characteristic of visible light is, of course, you can see it, and different waves of visible light have different frequencies. And the way they have different frequencies is they have different colors. Um, you guys can see in this bottom section of the electromagnetic spectrum down here, there's a whole batch of stuff we can't see between radio waves, microwaves, infrared, and then there's this narrow little strip right in the middle, and that's the only type of electromagnetic radiation that our eyes can perceive. Of course, our bodies can perceive other types of electromagnetic radiation. For example, if you feel heat, you're perceiving infrared radiation. If you get a sunburn, that's ultraviolet. If you're at the um, dentist for too long and that x-ray goes on forever, and therefore you get radiation poisoning, oh, those are x-rays. And of course, microwaves don't stick your hand in them, we can perceive all, most of the things on the spectrum, but we only see the ones right in that narrow sliver called the visible spectrum. Another thing you're going to notice about this is that these different, these different electromagnetic waves, of course, are characterized as to where they fall on the spectrum by what their frequency is. And you guys can see radio waves. These guys have the longest wavelengths. So long lambda, wow, that's a really not very useful um, highlighter. So long lambda, um, whereas gamma rays have a shorter wavelength, so short lambda. And of course, because wavelengths and frequency are inversely related to each other, a short frequency, uh, sorry, a short wavelength means a high frequency, and a long wavelength means a small frequency. And for the colors that we can see right in the middle, you guys can tell that the one with the longest wavelength or the shortest frequency is red light, and the one with the highest frequency or the shortest wavelength is violet light. And these, of course, correspond to the rainbow we know about, the Roy G. Biv. On your reference table, you'll find some exact values for the maximum and minimum frequencies that correspond to a given type of light a given color of visible light. Um, those are sort of guidelines. Nobody can say precisely, this is green, but we agree that in general, green falls between that those ranges that they give you on the reference table. If it falls right on the line, eh, it might be green, might be blue. You have to decide. So those are the different types of electromagnetic waves we see out in the wild. What makes a wave electromagnetic? Here are some of the characteristics. So when we talked about mechanical waves, they were always created by some kind of disturbance in a medium, like a sound wave was created by air passing over a reed, or a water wave was created by a stone falling into a lake or something, but there is always a medium in which the wave traveled. Electromagnetic waves don't need a medium, and they're created by an accelerating charged particle. If you have a charged particle, positive Q, and it's just sitting there, that particle is going to, of course, create an electric field. And that electric field, of course, points outwards from the particle. As we learned earlier, if you have a moving 
charged particle and it's going this way, then you have the electric field in all directions around it. And you also have this magnetic field B that kind of swirls around it. So you also have a magnetic field, which I'm not doing a very good job drawing, but hey, you've seen it already. And so that's a stationary charged particle here, a moving charged particle here. But then if you take that charged particle and you don't just let it move, you have it speed up as it moves, you have it accelerate either by having it increase in speed or by having it go around in a circle, then you get an electric field, a magnetic field, and you also get this electromagnetic radiation coming out in all directions from that accelerating charged particle. One really important characteristic of electromagnetic radiation is that we define it by saying anything that travels at the so-called speed of light is light. So all electromagnetic radiation travels at this speed. Um, this speed C, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, that's also in your reference table, and that's the speed at which this radiation travels in vacuum. Please remember, one of the characteristics is that electromagnetic radiation can travel in vacuum, whereas mechanical waves like sound waves or water waves cannot travel in vacuum. They need a medium. One thing you can do with that speed, if you know the speed, you can apply all the wave equations we have before, like speed equals wavelengths times frequency. For an electromagnetic wave, that would be C equals wavelengths times frequency. So you can do all the wave equations we've done before, but there's only one speed. And this one I'm kind of tossing in for the sake of completeness, but what is an electromagnetic wave? Well, as that charged particle moves, what it does is it creates this electric wave, this electric field that you see moving up and down in the diagram here. So this is the electric field and it's propagating, it looks like in the Y, sorry, excuse me, the Z X plane and this magnetic field that's propagating in the X Y plane. This is kind of for the sake of completeness. Um, we're not actually going to use this idea for anything this semester. So even though these are unusual waves in the sense that they don't need a medium to travel, as I said, they still obey all the rules about waves that we learned in the past, all the different wave equations that we learned to use in the past. Well, except for the one that tells you how to determine the speed and medium. But here's an example. So I give you a ray of visible light with a given wavelength of 534 nanometers. What color is it? Pause this video, answer that question, and then unpause, please. Well, if I want to know the color of light, I have to look up the frequency. And that's because the reference table tells me colors according to frequencies. So let me find the frequency of the light given the wavelength. Since I know all wave laws are obeyed, I know speed equals wavelength times frequency is true, and that's equal to the speed of light. So that means the frequency is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So three times 10 to the eight meters per second divided by 534 times 10 to the negative nine meters, because it's a nanometer. And I got that to be five point, let me look it up actually, 5.62 times 10 to the 14 Hertz. Let me pull up my reference table. So if I look at the ranges, if I want a frequency of 5.62 times 10 to the 14 Hertz, that's in between 5.2 times 10 to the 14 and 6.1 times 10 to the 14, which means that the color of my light is green. So that's the answer. We have a ray of green visible light. Okay, you guys are going to get a set of problems. They're fairly conceptual. And there are a couple of links about how color vision works on the website. Whenever you're done with the problems and you've checked your solutions, please look at these links about color vision. They're really quite interesting.